Hello and welcome to this tutorial on switches and how switches forward frames. You will come across switches on pretty much every local area network, so this is good stuff to know and you'll need to know this stuff for the certifications. So let's get started. We're going to take a look at some common characteristics of switches, introduce you to them, and then we'll jump into one of the three primary functions of a switch, and that is to forward frames. We'll take a look at how that is actually done. So let's get started. So here are some characteristics of switches worth mentioning. First, switches pretty much evolved from bridges, or in fact you could say a switch is a bridge, just many of them combined into one box with a lot more functionality and they're a lot more robust. So if you're looking at the timeline of Ethernet, you have your common bus with the coax cable, then we introduce hubs and then bridges and then switches, okay? However, switches are much more robust and they have a lot more features than the other devices, especially bridges. So they're more robust in that a switch performs a lot of its functionality in hardware. It's actually done in the hardware itself, which is a lot more efficient than how bridges do it. And bridges actually rely on software. So for software to run and to forward a frame and figure out how to do it, it's a lot slower and less efficient than when it's done in hardware on a switch. Some similarities though, both switches and bridges forward layer two broadcasts. We've talked about that in some of the other tutorials. And both learn and forward frames similarly. Also, when it comes to collision domains, switches and bridges are pretty similar. Um, every port on a switch is its own collision domain. So the benefits of that, you increase the overall bandwidth of the network because everyone's not sharing like you would um, on a hub where all devices have to share that, that 10 megabits per second, for instance. Um, here you have your own collision domain on each port. Speaking of ports, switches can support many different types of interfaces and just many more of those, uh, a greater number of interfaces. So uh, you can find on a switch a 10 megabit or 100 or even a gigabit ethernet uh, port on one switch, whereas bridges and hubs cannot do that. Also, there are many more. You can get 48 port, even larger switches with more capacity. Switches also support full duplex per interface, which, you know, doubles the speed on each segment you can both send and receive at the same time. Not too surprisingly, switches are smarter than hubs. Switches operate at layer two of the OSI model, whereas hubs are at layer one. A switch does not simply repeat a frame out every interface like a hub does. You'll see in a moment, it's a lot smarter. And finally, switches uh, use something called VLANs, and we get into VLANs in detail in other tutorials, uh, but they're a very powerful way to um, administer a, a layer two network, a switched network. There are three primary functions of a switch that you need to know, and this is perhaps in some ways more important than all the characteristics combined, or just as important, really. The first one is how a switch forwards a frame, and switches forward frames, that's what they're meant to do, getting a frame from one point to the next. And how that is done in detail is what we're going to focus on in this particular tutorial. The other two functions are addressed in detail in other tutorials, so check those out as well. But just to cover all the bases, switches have to learn addresses. If you're going to forward a frame, well, you need to know where to forward it to, so you need to learn addresses. That's the second function. The third function is loop avoidance. You do not want loops on your network, otherwise you create storms of traffic and it can bring down a network. And you might have heard of something called spanning tree protocol, STP. That's involved with loop avoidance and we cover that in the loop avoidance tutorial. Okay, so forwarding a frame, let's just take a quick example to flush out what exactly we mean by that. Um, let's say this PC here wants to send a frame to this one here. So quite literally, the source PC is going to create an Ethernet frame and put it on the wire and it gets sent to the switch. The switch then goes ahead and asks, well, what should I do with this? It figures out, what do I do with it? And we're going to look in detail into that process in just a minute. 
after it determines, hey, I should forward this frame and I know where to forward it, it does just that. It sends it out the appropriate port to the destination PC. So let's take a look at some detail on how this process works. Okay, at the heart of forwarding a frame on a switch lies the MAC address table or the MAC table. You might have also heard the name switching table or CAM. CAM just stands for content addressable memory. It's the same thing, but it's just referring to the type of physical memory used to hold the table. So all these refer to the MAC address table. We know MAC addresses, the Ethernet address or the physical address. Every device has one in an Ethernet network. And so what the switch does is it learns all the MAC addresses of the connected devices and it also makes note of which port it learned the address on and it throws them in a table. So for instance, if we're looking at this PC net here, we can see it's connected to port FA01. So this PC has a MAC address and it's right here. Okay. So the switch in the MAC address table says, okay, I know this MAC address lives on this port. And it does that with every device. So our second PC here has this MAC address. And we can see it's connected to port FA02. And of course, the MAC address table reflects that. So the switch knows every device and what port every device hangs off of. So now you can kind of see where we're going with this. If our source PC sends a frame and it arrives on the switch on port FA01 and the destination is this guy and here let's say is our destination MAC address. So the switch looks at the Ethernet frame and it looks at the MAC address, the destination MAC address in the Ethernet frame header. And it says, okay, 0024-555-1234. I see that that MAC address is in my table, and I see it's associated with port FA02. Well, now my job's done. Now it's easy. All I have to do is send that frame out, port FA02, and my job is done. I have successfully forwarded a frame. And that's it. It's that simple. Keep a note of all the MAC addresses and the ports you learned them on. Throw them into a table. When a frame hits me, take a look at the destination MAC address. See if I have it in my MAC address table. And then see what port is associated with it. And then just simply send it out, out that particular port. And that's it. That is how simple it is for a switch to forward a frame. So to summarize what we went over, we know switches are very robust. They have many features compared to bridges and to hubs. They support many different types of interfaces, fast, 10, or gigabit Ethernet. They reside at layer 2 of the OSI model. And there are three primary functions to a switch, forwarding frames, learning addresses, and loop avoidance. We also took a look at the MAC address table, some of the different names for it, and what information is stored in the MAC address table. And then the actual forwarding process. Take a look at the destination MAC address, compare it to the MAC table, find out which port that destination MAC address lives, and send it out that port. And that's it. Now you know how a switch forwards frames. Thanks for watching.